Hi, I'm Dr. Sharad Paul and in this Medical Mysteries channel, I'm going to bring you weird, wacky and wonderful stories from the world of medicine and from my own patients. Today we're going to be talking about some medical conditions which can make you best-selling author or what people have had which made them world-leading writers. As a writer, that intrigued me because I've written fiction, non-fiction, poetry and medical textbooks, but are there medical conditions which can make you best-selling authors? That's what we're going to find out today. I first thought about these cases when a few years ago I had a patient, these were the days when I used to see more general patients before I specialized in skin. And this patient told me the story about him going on a trip to Japan, he was on a holiday, he had a few business meetings, he said they had developed a strange sort of viral illness he thought, it felt like fluey, had a bit of a cough and a sore throat, so he bought some cough medicine, didn't think much of it and then he got better and then he just was flying back home but on the way he was on this airport lounge and he said that as he was sitting in the lounge he saw this snail which came in through the window and I said for real a snail in an airport lounge he said yeah you wouldn't believe me he said this snail came in but he said it was huge and it got bigger and bigger and it started eating an apple he had right in front of him and he looked at his hands and his hands had become really small and everything had gone really tiny. So he asked me, do you think I'm going mad or was I hallucinating or what was happening to me or can you explain that? So to do that, I had to get a more detailed history. Is there anything else you can tell me? I asked him, you know, had you been drinking, anything else? And he denied drinking or taking drugs. So the thing we had to find out is, was this a hallucination or an illusion? So what's the difference? See, illusion is a misperception. In other words, you're seeing something in an altered state. And a an hallucination is really you're seeing something which just isn't there, right? And then a delusion is of course a fixed idea which you're just stuck with. So was the snail actually there or was his brain simply making this up? You see, there have been medical conditions where our brain just makes up things which aren't there, even when you haven't got mental illness. See, there is a medical condition called the Charles Bonnet syndrome. This was actually described by the Swiss naturalist Charles Bonnet in 1760 when he was describing visual hallucinations his grandfather had. See, what happened is Charles Bonnet's grandfather developed cataracts and of course then he lost his vision. And as he was going blind, he began to see things which he would describe. He saw people from different eras, he saw people on the walls of his house, he saw plants indoors. But what was interesting is he knew that these things weren't real, but he was just seeing them so he was able to manage. Now, Charles Bonnet was a very keen observer. Although he trained as a lawyer, he was really a world-leading naturalist and that was his real passion. In fact, the arrangement of trees and plants, you know, phyllotaxis, which is the arrangement of leaves and plants, was first described by Charles Bonnet. Ironically, Charles Bonnet himself began to lose vision and he developed the same syndrome and he began to see things which he documented. Nearly 200 years later, in 1967, uh, Georges de Mosier, a um, Swiss um, doctor, named the syndrome after Charles Bonnet. So a syndrome where, as you're losing your vision, the brain, which is so used to you seeing things, basically can't see those things anymore, so it simply just makes things up. So in other words, you're having a visual hallucination. Was this what my patient was having? So it's well known that people with the Charles Bonnet syndrome don't have a mental illness, um, they don't have delusions, but this is just purely a visual hallucination. In fact, the diagnosis is excluding these mental diseases 
and also confirming that they're developing loss of vision. So the first thing I did in my patient is I checked my vi his vision and it checked out fine. He didn't have any cataracts, the back of his eyes looked fine. So obviously he didn't have um, Charles Bonnet syndrome, but what did he have? And that's what I needed to find out. People with Charles Bonnet syndrome actually don't have mental disease or delusions. It's purely a visual hallucination simply because the brain is just demanding some visual stimuli and in the absence of any sensory input coming, it just makes things up. So one of the ways we diagnose it is actually ruling out mental illness, uh, we rule out delusions and we also check the eyesight to make sure the eyesight is fine. So this patient of mine, he was a bit worried because his mother had macular degeneration and had lost her vision. So we did an eye check and it's actually his vision was perfectly fine. In fact, MRI scans done of people with a Charles Bonnet syndrome show that during the hallucinations they've increased activity of the parieto occipital cortex of the brain. So there's actually something specifically going on at the time these hallucinations are happening. And in these hallucinations, sometimes people th see things very small, really tiny, like Lilliputian people. Speaking of Lilliputian or tiny people, you know, there've been many stories with giants and little people, the most famous being in 1726, Gulliver's Travels, which is written by Jonathan Swift, detailed the travels of Gulliver to the remote regions of the world where in some cases he found people which were so small who thought he was a real giant. Alice in Wonderland, for example, was another one um, where Alice eats a cake and becomes really massive and the rabbit becomes big. So what you find in Alice in Wonderland is again, people become small or big. but. In Alice in Wonderland, was it hallucination or an illusion? Or did Lewis Carroll, who wrote Alice in Wonderland, have a medical syndrome? Interestingly, Alice in Wonderland, the recent film, grossed over $1 billion. And when Alice in Wonderland was published by Lewis Carroll, it was actually the best-selling book of all time at its period in time. So really, was there something going on that made him create this or was it just his imagination? Here's a passage from Alice in Wonderland. Soon her eye fell on a little glass box that was lying under the table. She opened it and found in it a very small cake on which the words eat me were beautifully marked in currants. Well, I'll eat it, said Alice, and if it makes me grow large, I can reach the key. If it makes me grow smaller, I can creep under the door. So either way, I'll get into the garden and I don't care what happens. So she set to work and very soon finished off the cake. Just at that moment, her head struck against the roof of the hall. In fact, she was now rather more than nine feet high and she at once took up the little golden key and hurried off to the garden door. Poor Alice, it was as much as she could do lying down on one side to look through into the garden with one eye. But to get through was more hopeless than ever. She sat down and began to cry again. But when she went on all the same, shedding gallons of tears until there was a large pool all around her, about four inches deep, reaching halfway down the hall. Reading the diaries of Lewis Carroll, one knows that he suffered from migraines. So was there something in his migraines that was causing him to see things? In fact, there is a medical condition called Alice in Wonderland syndrome. It was first described by John Todd, a psychiatrist in the 1950s, where he noticed that people with migraines began to see things and perhaps about 15% of adults with migraines developed the condition. In children, they can get the same kind of visual illusions um, when they get certain infections such as encephalitis and occasionally in debilitating diseases like the Creutzfeldt Jakob or the CJD which is effectively the human version of the mad cow disease also people can get it but just in migraines yeah it is true so in migraines some people uh, develop visual 
illusions which are like micropsia where everything looks really tiny or micropsia where everything looks large or teleopsia where everything looks far away so what we know is in this Alice in Wonderland syndrome which can be caused because of an infection typically in children or migraine in adults they get these visual illusions and on reading the diaries of Lewis Carroll it was these illusions which he documented and created the wonderful imagination of Alice in Wonderland when MRI scans are done on patients with Alice in Wonderland syndrome they actually see increased activity in the parieto occipital cortex like a ribbon of tissue especially on diffusion um, weighted MRI gets lit up like a ribbon and this sign in diffusion weighted MRI which fundamentally measures the swelling of tissues shows that a particular part of the brain is indeed affected but in these patients it's often uh, temporary during their attack of migraines over 55 percent of people with Alice in Wonderland syndrome are males although often it's at younger ages one of the ways in diagnosing the Alice in Wonderland syndrome is the fact that it needs to be consistent that everything in their field of vision gets distorted like what we discussed either something very small or something large or far away or you're looking at your own limbs they're looking small or very big as opposed to in the Charles Bonnet syndrome where we've got strange things appearing inside our house inside our field of vision which the patient knows are not there which was a total visual hallucination as we saw earlier one of the best-selling short stories which became two major movies was the life of Walter Mitty which was written by James Thurber the American writer in 1939 he was a famous writer columnist for the New Yorker and cartoonist now James Thurber if you look at the story of Walter Mitty it's about a guy who imagines himself as a Navy pilot a surgeon a spy so he has this super life when the actual fact is just driving to work with his wife and he's a very hand-picked husband with a domineering wife but he escapes into a world where he sees himself leading the military in war as a heroic surgeon and all these wonderful stories so the life of Walter Mitty was made into two major movies you know obviously st starring Danny Kaye in the first version in Hollywood and more recently um, there was one with Ben Stiller now here's what was interesting when James Thurber was very small he and his brothers um, played a game of William Tell so basically they were just uh, reenacting the William Tell story with an apple on the head and shooting an arrow and one of his brothers shot an arrow into his eye and he lost his vision in Walter Mitty's life stories he never fulfills his fantasies every time his fantasies are about to come real he's pulled back to real life and he comes back to reality and that was what the themes of the movie is all about so in James Thurber's case to compensate for his loss of vision because of his injury his brain began to compensate and he developed the Charles Bonnet syndrome so in the Charles Bonnet syndrome like we said earlier the brain simply makes up things which are not there and you can see things really big or small or things which aren't there so there's a wonderful cartoon of this woman visiting a doctor and the doctor suddenly looks like a giant rabbit and the rabbit doctor then asked the lady what do you mean uh, are people looking like rabbits to you so so that kind of stuff he had a wonderful imagination and neurologists now come to the conclusion that James Thurber because of his loss of vision actually suffered from the Charles Bonnet syndrome now coming back to my patient what caused his symptoms obviously he didn't have mental illness he didn't have migraines so I was at a loss to explain his visual hallucinations so I got interested in the history again went back over it and asked him what was in the cough medicine he consumed in Japan now interestingly many cough medicine in Asia have um, dihydrocodeine or dimethyl ephedrine 
which actually interestingly can cause the Alice in Wonderland syndrome. In syndromes like the Alice in Wonderland syndrome and indeed the Charles Bonnet, we see that the occipital lobes are involved. In the occipital lobe, um, in the brain, the tracts, we have a ventral stream and a dorsal stream. The ventral stream is all about the what and what you see, whereas the dorsal stream is about the where and what you see. And so that's quite an interesting distinction and I've just put up a little picture here for you to see. From Gulliver's Travels, to Alice in Wonderland, to Honey We Shrunk the Kids, to Honey We Shrunk Ourselves, there have been many best-selling books and novels on the themes of people becoming really small or really large. So who knows if you had the misfortune or fortune, depending on your viewpoint, to develop one of these syndromes, you may end up the world's most best-selling author. Wouldn't that be fantastic? This is Dr. Sharad Paul signing off from this episode of the Medical Mysteries channel and I hope you found it interesting. Feel free to subscribe, follow us and come back for more and I'll see you next time.